King Angelbert, King of France, Plantagenet, and Angevin, is leading his house into a new future, and hopefully in future, a France independent of the Holy Roman Empire. Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here. Welcome back to the channel. And more Plantagenus, Plantagenus? Plantagenus, yeah, sure, we'll go with that. More Plantagenus action here on CK3. Um, so, last episode was a rather momentous one, and we now have the Kingdom of France once more. I'm going to unpause the game, and we move forward here. Now, of course, the Holy Roman Empire keeps growing and expanding its borders to so try to gobble up as much of the quote-unquote German states as possible. Of course, there is no Germany at this time. There's also no sense of nationhood as we uh, understand it these days. But I digress. Instead, we are now looking here internally, and if we just slightly zoom in, there. So this is the little, you can see all the HRE here, and boop, in here, you can clearly see by far the most powerful entity is the Kingdom of France. So the big burning question, of course, is what do we do now moving forward as the Kingdom of France? We have lands that we could try to further gobble up. I'm looking at you, Savoy, and you at Upper Burgundy, because we have claims that we can press here. Burgundy, as a reminder, to Reina's claims, that would cost us 750 prestige, but would add that to the realm, uh, or make him just that little bit more powerful, or we can claim it for, you know, one of his um, vassals. Uh, looks, uh, grandeur rank has increased, nice. Or, of course, here, Count Valta II. And then the, the other one, of course, is Savoy itself. And here we have de jour lands that belong to France. And not worry about this chunk here. At least not right now. But instead, focus on a unification of French lands. And Upper Burgundy isn't really one I'm that overly interested in. Via Noir, we have nothing here. So it's nothing I want to focus on. Oh, Hook, line, what a wonderful, what a wonderful, what a wonderful day to go fishing. I do like fly fishing. Uh, I'd feel like nothing could wipe the smile off my face were it not for a voice behind me and my fishing partner, Etienne. I thought he was your buddy. Look who we have here. Richard clearly just returned from a fishing trip of his own is flanked by the figure of Gilbert. The former reaches down and grabs one of the wriggling catch. The resemblance is uncanny. Apparently we go fishing with swords. I turn to go with a dramatic roll of the eyes, but a thud and a trickling wetness down the back of my neck stops me dead. Etienne's eyes narrow as he regards the fish that had been thrown at us. We settle this with fists. Richard, you bampot, duel me. Mm hmm. His prowess is a seven. Our prowess is a fourteen. He is humble. He's not proud. He is cynical. I won't get drawn into a childish brawl. We settle this with fists. So there's a 74 chance that, I mean, either way, we both get wounded. Or there's a chance, 25% chance, that Agabat gets wounded. Yeah, we're going to do this. And you gain 75. And Richard and Gilbert are both wounded. So enough of that foolishness. We will look, I think, at adding Savoy next before we turn our attentions to going for independence, because that is something we desperately want to do. Uh, Prince Sintul can marry, so let's see if we can find him someone mm, worthy of his time. He's irritable and improvident. So we're going to go with um, a Scandinavian, another Scandinavian alliance here, essentially, with Jutta Jakobsdotter, Sp uh, Sprakelik. See her here. She's 21 years old. Midas touched, lustful, zealous, yet calm. Very good in stewardship. 
And uh, this, I believe, would be a good match for our second born. So yes, I believe going after Savoy will be the right play to go. There we go. So, see? Um, Prince Elia of Burgundy occupies a throne that should rightly be yours. I'm willing to support your claim with word and sword. I'm sure others in the royal will also champion this rightful cause. All you need to do is accept it. It is not right. So, interesting here. This is our second-born son. And if we look at him, he is an intricate web weaver. And of course, he leans more into an intrigue style play. He's also sadistic, generous, but he is patient. And the fact that he would be okay with his brother, who is the heir apparent to the Kingdom of France, to be removed from Burgundy is an interesting thing to keep in mind. Now, I was looking at Savoy. So here is our alliance with that marriage. If we declare the war here for our du jour lands, they have 16,000, they have 56,000. Their allies are Champagne, who is our vassal. And, oh, Count Ibad of Neuchâtel. So they're down to one ally who is our vassal, who I believe what we'll do here is actually we'll start to sway him to become more friendly aligned with us. So Savoy will be very um, isolated, as it were. So we have Duke André of Armagnac. He has come to show his loyalty. Rich gifts worthy of him. So show the Duke in at once. I wait patiently on my throne for the arrival of Duke André, who is soon announced and ushered before me. He kneels in deference as attendants bring forth his gifts of coin, etc., etc. The Duke has clearly practiced the Iberian vulgar vows. He mispronounces a lot. Good effort, André. You know, it's not easy. Uh, learning a new language, or it's not easy with a language that you do not know well. So if we strategically look at going after Savoy in a war to try to claim these du jour lands here, we do have Upper Burgundy and Viennois in the way of the heartland of Savoy and their capital here within Savoy itself. It, it poses a bit of a challenge because this is predominantly a mountainous region of what is today northern Italy. A very beautiful area, by the way. Uh, you look here, the Aosta region is one of my favorite regions in Europe. So the question, of course, remains, what, what do we do here? I, I think we just have to go for it, bring in all of our allies. We have plenty to bring to the table um, even though I don't even know if we're going to necessarily need them. But uh, this is definitely the way we're going to start off today's episode, is to declare war for our du jour lands. As we raise our army down here in the south, we did, you know, call in one house member, but that's really it. I am not concerned with calling in too many other allies. If things start getting a little bit difficult, then we will do that. So I see Macon is under siege. So they have come across the border. I think the first thing we're going to do is try to defeat the Savoyes, the Savoyan army in the field and disperse them bit by bit and then go after... Um, a counselor has died. Peekaboo! I can hear it echoing down the corridor, light giggles occasionally breaking out into full appeals of laughter. As I round the corner, the culprits are revealed. Henri, with, with judging by the discarded books strewn across the table, his studies very much abandoned, has his half-sister Berenguer clutched in his arms. The baby burbles happily as Henri peeks through the fingers at her, the two of them giggling. Henri, remember to do your studies. It's good they are spending time together. No, it's all about work. Work, work, work. So their army has disengaged. But we are going to chase them and ideally stop them somewhere so we can... Ah, good. In the plains of Bresse, before they could retreat all the way to the mountains. 
and destroying them here would be exactly what we want. So victory is ours at the Battle of Bres. And now we can actually return back as they're going to recover and we can siege down the lands that we actually want to have. Let's see, their army is still in, in the southern retreat. Ah, okay, they're sieging down here in Nice. Um, very, very far away from us. A courtier between friends. My brother, Prince Valeran, has honored me with a visit and has brought one of his courtiers along. Valeran approaches me excitedly. Well met, King Agelbert. Pleases me to see you thriving here in Anjou. It occurred to me that Leonard here might be of service in your court. He is an incredibly talented young strategist. His mind is always spinning out... Yes, yeah, spinning. I thought spitting. Out possible tactics. I would make use of him myself, but alas, it doesn't seem possible. I would hate to see his great talent go to waste. Won't you take him in and unleash his potential? Mm, Leonard? Oh, wow. Yes. Yes, of course. And we have seized the blooded blade of the siege there. And our allies are going to win a siege next door. Child of my dynasty, Ascenda, the daughter of Duke Valda of Gascon, has given birth to a son of the Danjou dynasty. Uh, Henri. Sure, another Henri. Why not? Going to move our army up here and help them in that siege. We've got a new dynasty perk to unlock, and it will be toe the line. Your vassals are less likely to join independence factions. I do like that. So another siege is won. We're at 63%. Uh, how long is that siege? 17 months for them to take Nice. So I believe what we can do then is move our army up north here to Langre. Or do we go straight for the Sav Savoy Heartland? Yes, I think we're going to do that instead. Because there's also our liege has a war and we don't really want to be close to these guys um, so that they don't actually move against us. In our recent communication, my vassal Duc Raymond expressed a want to focus on his ambition and interests more. I could make sure that our upcoming letters contain more uh, on a topic close to his heart. Let's take a look at him real quick. Put him up here to the left. I have heard that he appreciates feasts of war, or feats of war even. A feast of war wouldn't be bad. Uh, subterfuge and intrigue. Believe and ties him like a good book. Yes, he is very high in learning. So that's what we'll focus on. In his response, my vassal Duc Raymond encouraged my slight dip into more personal topics. Now I just have to keep pretending that I know anything about it. Army has now arrived in Geneva and will begin the siege there. They are still struggling down there in Nice, 14 months before anything happens down there. This will be done in five months, and our allies are in Moutier. So together, we should be okay with this. You lost 40 opinion of Duke Prince Valoran. Uh, may not try to fabricate hooks. Okay. So we don't like him, but he still loves us. Our liege is losing a war. For that uh, claim war on the Duchy of Lower Lorraine. So looking at uh, the timing, we're, these two sieges are going to be won before they win theirs down in Nice. And that might just push that war score right over the top. And then once the war against Savoy is done, look at a few things internally. The good Duke. While hosting lords and ladies from realms near and far, some opportunities to portray my vassal Duke Raymond in a good light have presented themselves. Duke Raymond with uh, my lord. Pray tell, who is the most gracious person you have heard of? Duke Raymond, without a doubt. So just a few days left here in Geneva. And then we'll win that. Oh, we've got a new liege, a new emperor. And there is victory. We can enforce our demands. Disband all and so be it. We have won that. You have gained a favor hook on Prince Elier. And with that, Savoy has now been added to the fold, and specifically to Burgundy. Um, so our realms are quite nice and powerful. 
So with that out of the way, I mean, moving against Upper Burgundy could be the next one for 750 prestige and add that to the Kingdom of France, at which point it's going to become harder and harder for anybody to withstand our power. And the Holy Roman Empire, Sicily now has a toehold here in central Germany. We also still have Tirol we could go after, as well as some places here in northern Italy, even though I'm not really that interested in that. We do have something now at our court. The finest meat available to humanity. I spot my cupbearer, Eleanor, and Mathieu wobbling slightly and pouring a drink from one of my rarest bottles for Mathieu. It is such a shame King Angelbert has all this mead he hoards like a dragon. For such a delicious morsel, you deserve tastes as wondrous as your own. They don't even blink when they spot me. Ah, my lord, uh, we are preemptively testing all of your drinks for poison. After I burden my guts with each drop, I shall bear my headache tomorrow as naught but a battle wound acquired fighting in your honor. My precious stores, you are an unworthy servant. Uh, Eleanor, she is nothing to me. You shall go away. Now we're going to take a look at our council real quick. And Count Gofried. So, modify vassal contract. Ah, he's got uh, guaranteed council rights. That's what we have on there. So, that is part of the problem. So what can we do here? Well, we need to find a hook on him. That would already help us. Gofried all the way up here in Lisieux. So we're going to find secrets in Lisieux. The next one is Count Richard of Rouen, who, same, guaranteed council rights. And that is an act of tyranny. Now, we could, you know, reduce his levies by uh, 200 men to get that taken care of. I mean, 200 at this point, I don't feel is going to make a huge difference. So we'll modify his vassal contract. And, but with Gofried, we're going to see if we can find something against him. And then our steward... Well, once he accepts that, we will make some changes there. So, what we have here, we have a betrothal between my son and your granddaughter. Sure. A secret exposed. Count Bernard, ton of Aosta, has accused my vassal Duke Arnaud of an extramarital affair with his soulmate, Agalina. God will judge these sinners. I'm not worried about it. A lover's visitation. I lay cozily in my bed when I feel a familiar touch drifting across my bare chest. Think nothing of it at first, but as my eyes struggle open, I see that it is my dearly departed Duchess Eslamon of Burgundy sitting beside me. Oh, my little firebrand, it has been so long, hasn't it? But when I hold you and kiss you, does the love not return to your heart as if it all happened yesterday? Hold me, my sweetness, love me all over again. I cannot believe it, yet I see her and feel her. Though I know this to be a dream, it is so vivid. Yes, oh, hold me like you did so many, so long ago. Give sensual dreams for five years, so fertility goes down. Not really worried about that, but stress gain goes down and stress loss and gets increased. And we are no longer overwhelmed by stress. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes those kind of dreams are not too bad. So, to the modest Angelbert, Guillaume of de Toussy is dear to me. Would you let him go in return for an offer? Yeah, sure. He can go. We'll take that. those ten. And I'm still trying to decide what to do with Burgundy. They have no allies. Declaring war and adding it to the realm costs us 750 prestige, which we could afford to spend right now just to strengthen us. So... I think it is worth it. We, If we go here from Dijon and launch a, an invasion into Besancon from there, I think that would be the best strategy. So we'll move here to Dijon. And now we shall declare the war for Duke Regnier. And we will raise all the armies. And I honestly, I don't 
we don't need to call in any allies at this point either. Our army is fully raised. And we will now move into Besancon. Uh, actually, we could meet them in the field here. Chase the army around a little bit. Ah, uh, espionage. While performing his duties as a spy master, Prince Valen has uncovered a secret held by Mayor Helvisa of Sez. Very interesting. I'm not overly worried about that. Okay, we're not going to chase their armies now anymore. It's a small force. We're going to siege down their capital instead of Bessan. It's not Bessan called Bessanson. Apologize. Your wisdom and mercenary religion have been a good vassal to you, but surely you understand that I have subjects of my own too. My current contract is very restrictive. Countess Guigon of Bourbon. Seems I have little choice. You see here they are besieging Macon. That will take them eight months. And in just about a month, we will win the siege of Bessanson. So, with the siege of Bessanson going so well, I believe we can now head south here. We're going to see if we can take on the army and destroy them in the field. The faithful prepare for war. Oh, the new crusade is coming. A papal envoy has reached my court, bringing news from the Vatican. Pope Hadrianus issued a call to arms to all righteous Christian rulers. As a Catholic king, I'm expected to prepare my men in support of this most holy cause sponsored by the Universal Church itself. To all those who will take the fight against the vile infidels desecrating the holy grounds of Tahert, Holy See, promises full absolution from all sins. My warriors will be ready to fight. Indeed. So, a beneficiary... Let's see, who could we appoint? Prince Bohemond of Aragon, our brother, and an acclaimed knight. That might not be bad. He has one child. Yes. I think he would be an excellent beneficiary. We'll see if we can take them in the field. Will they leave? They will not. They are going to stand and fight. And, uh, yeah, this will be a victory for us, beyond any doubt. The Battle of Bujol. Does a costly one. Stag Anther has been destroyed. Not worried about that. So we have captured a valuable prisoner. And now we can move up north here. We do not have a commander. Duke Ferran of Barcelona. He is a logistician and a flexible leader. So he will be the new army commander. And we begin our siege of Dole, which will be done in a few months. What do we have here? Betrothal between the son of the king of Sicily and our niece, Stephanie. Yes, I will accept that. New stewardship lifestyle, lifestyle perk. Honor to serve. Powerful vassal, counselor, tax contribution plus 20% and plus 20%. For their levy contribution. Ooh, we need a new court physician. Most definitely. So we shall look for a new one. Antiquarian. What else do we have here? A monk. That intrigue. I mean, really average at best and then terrible. So instead what we're going to do here is we are going to search. Ah, there comes the Burgundian army marching back up north. Well, we could try to destroy them in the field, but a court physician has presented himself. Apparently, Barthélemy is quite experienced. He is a physician and an herbalist. Or Alain, who is a novice physician. So, Barthélemy was 600. Oof. That's, that's a lot to spend on him, but we have the cash, so I'm not worried about that. So a week left, Dole will be ours, and with that, all of Upper Burgundy has been added to France. So, now the question is, where we go from here? Um, I'm a, you know, this is kind of an eyesore, Viennois, to be perfectly blunt, sitting here right in the middle, staring at us. But it is what it is. Duchy of Brabant. There's nothing we can do here. Uh, Enon. 
You could do kind of has claims there as well. Or for the count, yeah, I mean, we could declare war, grab that as well. But I honestly, I think we're a little bit war weary at this point. Whiskey McCord, my spy master has come to me with grave news. Well, we do not know yet. Someone is plotting against me. I'm going to stop the villain behind this. Oh, boy. Wouldn't it be interesting if it was our second-born son? Everybody grant you the Duchy of Ancona. It's rank for and associated income. So now we have lands in northern Italy. Expanded. Uh, we just become more and more powerful. We've got a dangerous faction here. They want lowered crown authority. It is frustrating. They will send an ultimatum in nine months. Count Arnaud of Amiens, you, Spoleto, Men, Ferrara, Evreau, Aragon, etc., etc. Betrothed can marry. So that will be taken care of. So when they come a knock in, our crown authority would go down. So if we go down here, rules can change between available partition succession laws. Titles can be revoked. Vassals can be retracted. Mm, it's pushing it a little bit far. And I would almost want to go to war. Uh, I do not hold my wife close to my heart. The more time I spend with Freya, the more I start to understand why that is. Everything she does gets on my nerves just a little to live an entire life with this person. Well, you know, you are 61, so that entire life will not be too long. We have too many held duchies at this point. The Duchy of Ancona. Okay, I mean, we could grant this title to someone. But who? Prince saint Toul of France? Uh, actually, I think we shall grant that title to our son. Send him off to Italy to manage the affairs there. We have children that lack guardians. I've been taking care of that. We've got Jacques de Bar, our grandson. So, stewardship would be his strength. Uh, Prince Henri, I think, would be a good steward there. And our son, Guillaume, who also leans towards stewardship, but is pensive. So, here, stewardship. Uh, you know, I shall be his guardian and tutor. Thriving Rabinist community in Ulastret. The expansion of trading ports in Ulastret has made it a thriving hub for Jewish peoples all in Iberia. A member of a major Radonite trading family has been bringing in more and more of his people. It will be very hard of the vast Jewish trade network. If they are not Christian, they are not welcome. Perhaps he should be Bishopric Ulastret's lord. Uh, what a fine development. We will just go with that. The Crusade for Tahert has been called Deus Volt. Okay, so let's uh, take a look here real quick as it's time for more Crusades. Cr Crusade for Tahert. So here we go. So it's for all of these lands here. Interesting. And we can see all the allies that have joined the war so far. They've got 94,000. We have 221,000. So, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> but the problem is, I know we're going to deal with an uprising here, aren't we? So they just sent an ultimatum in 12 months. Oh, man. I don't want to be forced into this situation. What comes around? Crack. My whip tears into me fiercely again and again. The intense, isolated burning pain focuses me. Give my body the last just a few more times. Each strike brings me a smidgen closer to the sweet absolution. Then I spot Berenguer, my daughter, staring right at me. Mm, not exactly the finest hour. Lasting impact, you think? 
My dim dungeons reverberate with screams of pain, youthful screams. I hasten forth, squinting. I see the culprit is my daughter Berenguer, and is that one of my whips? My jaw drops as Berenguer wounds herself in the name of the Lord. Berenguer, come here. Um, 75% chance, gains 25 opinion, 25% chance she is also flagellant. Oh, oh, God, the RNG, man. That is rough. That is rough right there. And we have died. King Angelbert of France rests in the arms of the Lord at 62 years of age. He died of old age. He reigned only for 15 years. Known for spending most of his nights in his laboratory, he was believed by many to be nothing more than a warlock, concocting unholy spells in the secrecy of his castle. King Elie ascends to the throne. A craven coward is unlikely that his subjects will respect him. Wow, I wasn't expecting it to happen right now, but obviously it did. And this is then as good a spot as any to end today's episode. If we think about King Angelbert, of course, he came to the throne as a king of Aragon, following his father, Henri II, the Good, who had expanded Aragon quite significantly. But Angelbert, you would have to say in just 15 short years, would be one of the most impactful rulers of the Plantagenets to date. He not only expanded Aragonese lands, he then founded the kingdom of Aquitaine. And from that, he expanded the Aquitanian lands to the point where he was able to declare himself king of all of France and essentially has all of France. And at this point is looking at the possibility of, you know, uh, becoming an independent nation again. But he dies at 62. I would like to know your thoughts down in the comments below about Angelbert's 15 years and what we will make of young 23-year-old King Elie moving forward. We'll take a look at new King Elie in the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, please do hit a like button. You can also share the series. That would be greatly appreciated. If you want to figure out ways or find new ways to support the channel, Monetarily, of course, you can buy me a coffee if you like what I'm doing or hop on over to Patreon. All the links are down in the description. So until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.